So to start off, let me just log in. You can log in with Google, GitHub, or Orchid credentials. I'm going to use Orchid credentials for this demo. Um, it, it matters which login you use because that uh, ECML remembers my, my content. It remembers the, the packages that I've worked on and so on, but it does so under the account that I'm logged in as. So at the moment, since I'm logged in using ORCID credentials, when I look at the list of documents that uh, I've worked on in the past, it, these are the, the documents that I've worked on within this particular account. So that's just something to note. Uh, but going back to the baseline here, the, the, the general layout is that there are these drop-down menus across the top, which have various function. There's functionality, there's um, a user guide, which is quite extensive, um, that tells you, you know, it's basically the manual which hopefully you don't have to look at very much. Uh, there's a lot of help and so on, but it's there. Uh, there's a news page, which has all the, the releases, the major releases, there are minor releases happening all the time, but um, so you can sort of go back and look and whoa, oh, I didn't know that feature was added, that kind of thing. Uh, clicking easy, easy you know, up here in the corner is like a home button. So it brought you back home. The, down the left here, we have, a list of contents, which are basically the major sections of a EML document. You won't necessarily use all of these in, in filling out a given document, but they're, uh, they are there. Um, the, you can use um, easy EML as a, as a sort of wizard, letting it step you through these sections sequentially, or you can click on any one of them to jump directly to it. For, for our purposes here, I'm going to use it more as a wizard just to start with. So the the, the uh, section I'm on right now is title, it's highlighted, and that's the page that I'm seeing on the right. Notice the little question mark buttons, those are help. Some of the help uh, tells you about something about EML, what EML, like for this is a title, what does EML expect in the way of a title? So you don't really have to know EML coming in. That's the hope anyway. And then other help sometimes is telling me about how to, it, something pertaining to, to the usage of easy EML itself. Uh, so let's say, you know, I, I add some text here and I hit save and continue. Uh, let me just uh, interject that the, um, it's, it's like you're filling out one giant form, but it's a form that's broken into pages. So you can think of like, uh, you know, a paper form that you, you turn the page, you turn the page. And as you go along, as you'd expect, everything that you've already entered is saved. So I hit, hit save and continue, I go on. It takes me to the next page, the next section of the, of the document. Um, this is a sort of a typical uh, layout where when we have a list of items. So in this case, we have a list of, of data tables that, um, uh, have already been added. And let me actually switch to um, a sample data package that I have. Um, so this has a couple tables that have already been defined. The metadata has been defined and the, and the data itself has been uploaded. Um, when, you, when there's a list like this, there are up and down arrows for reordering the list. If you wanted to do that, there's an edit button, which is what you use to go into the detail for that particular item to either examine it or edit it. Uh, you can remove an item from the list. And in the, in the case of data tables, there's also a re-upload feature, which we'll come to in a little bit. The, um, so like, for example, when I, this decomposition data table, if I open it, I see a, um, a page of, of items that metadata items that are pertain to the table as a whole. And then I see a, a list of the columns in the table. And if I click edit column properties, I see the, the list of uh, columns. And the columns can be, uh, the variables can have categorical type, date, time, numerical, or text. We don't have a text example in this particular case. And then if I go to any edit properties for any particular column, I see the its properties, 
Uh, if it's a categorical column, I see the, uh, the, cate the category codes and so on. So all the detail is there and you, you just sort of step down into uh, detail pages. The, uh, oh, the one thing that's interesting or useful is that the, a lot of this information is filled in for you by easy ML when you upload the table. It, it looks at the table and then it infers the, the number of records, the, uh, uh, what the record delimiter is, what the checksum is, what the, the columns are and so on. And for categorical columns, it reads what the codes are, et cetera. Um, so let me just real quick, oh, uh, before I do that, let me sh show you that the, um, there's this check metadata feature down here, which is uh, there's a little traffic indicator, red, yellow, green, that shows you the current state of your metadata as you're, as you're working. Ha have you done everything you need to do? Are there things missing? Uh, right now it's yellow because there's a few warnings. Uh, we, we have some project personnel where, we, where I haven't entered an ORCID ID or email address, but they're not fatal that I could submit the package in this state. So that's just yellow. Um, so if I upload a, a new table, the, you see a whole bunch of stuff is filled in for me by easy ML and it's found the, the column types and so on. And so a lot, I'm, I'm well on my way to finishing the, um, metadata for this table. But if I look at the check metadata, I see that there are some errors now. It's, it's turned to red. And that's because there, there are items about the table that uh, cannot be inferred from the CSV file itself. For example, the, what is the, the description of the table as a whole? Or what are the definitions of the various categorical codes? But as you enter those, uh, the, this list will keep shrinking until finally you're back to the yellow state or green again. I'm not going to um, take the time to, to go through that process, but um, hopefully that gives you the idea. And the, uh, a lot of that is spelled out in detail in the earlier webinar. Um, and then as you go through, you know, when we're done with data tables, we go on to creators, which are people and organizations that are creators of this particular data package. And then, and, Again, it's a list with arrows and uh, edit, remove. It looks like all the other lists. The, um, and every time we have a page that describes a person or organization, the layout is, is the same. So for creators, contacts, associated parties, metadata providers, and project personnel, they all look the same. There are a number of other things that you would fill in in a, in a typical um, metadata document, the abstract for the package as a whole, keywords. Uh, we can add keywords from the LTER control vocabulary, or you can uh, use a, a keyword thesaurus of your choice. Uh, so if I look at a keyword, you know, you could fill in a different vocabulary. The um, intellectual rights, what, what licensing are we using for this data package? Geographic coverage, these are Rectangular regions that are uh, that uh, encompass the where the research itself was done, temporal coverage, time periods covered by the research, taxonomic coverage, various taxa that are represented, and so on. Um, so that's the kind of the general um, uh, quick overview of the the general functionality of easy email to get, get your bearings.